Before the Route 66 music festival shooting, the Pulse nightclub massacre, and the Uvalde school shooting came 101 California. There was a man walking towards us with, you know, looked like professional attire, khaki pants, a white shirt, and he walked up to the to the young man right in front of us and shot him. Michelle Hobus, who was visiting her husband, John Scully, at the Pettit and Martin law firm for the day, remembers running back into an office to hide. John was laying on top of me, really trying to protect me. And I remember just looking up and seeing the barrel, uh, seeing the gunman's shoes and looking up and seeing the barrel of the gun and then just putting my head down and um, until the shooting stopped. Hobus took five bullets to the right side of her body and before she could get on the phone with 911 operators. John looked up at me and he said, Michelle, I'm dying. I love you. The shooter killed eight people, including her husband, before turning the gun on himself. When our incident happened 30 years ago, it was big news. And now, unfortunately, it seems like it's become part of our landscape. In the months and years that followed this shooting, Hobus mobilized with the victims' families and other shooting survivors to demand stricter gun control on the state and federal level. The legislation that came out of uh, the passion and the dedication from the survivors of 101 California Street was very powerful federally. On the federal level, the Brady Bill was passed, which established America's federal background check system for gun sales. And later, a 10-year assault weapons ban was passed through Congress. It expired in 2004. Despite that progress, Brian Malti, executive director of the Hope and Heal Fund, says we need to look beyond just legislation. So if we're not tackling uh, easy access of guns in the home, if we're not tackling uh, intimate partner violence and firearms, um, and, you know, for those in crisis, we're not really addressing mass shootings in its totality. And with more than 300 mass shootings across the country this year, according to the Gun Violence Archive, 2023 is on pace to become the deadliest year for mass shootings in recent history. It's a worse landscape than it was in 1993 and 1994 when we were trying to pass legislation. And today, even 30 years later, she says their fight is far from over. I really think we have to wake up and put child locks on guns, safe storage on guns, mandatory background checks, and get rid of these high-capacity magazines.